So today we're going to be learning how to create a really simple RESTful API using Python and the Django web framework. So our API is going to return JSON. All it's going to do is it's going to return a car and its top speed if we give our API the car's name. If I send a GET request to Tesla Model S, you can see our API returned that the car is the Tesla Model S and its top speed is 155 miles per hour. And now if I try to ask for a car that we don't know about, so if I just put another letter in there, hit enter, you can see it says no car with that name. And you can see here in PAW, I can send a POST request to our API with the parameters car name and top speed. And I run that, it says the car was added successfully. So we're going to be learning how to easily create this in Python. So the first thing we obviously need is Python. So download Python from python.org and install it on your computer and then download the Django web framework. You can either download it here or we're going to use Python's built-in package installer called pip. So the first thing I have is a folder to hold all of our code and I have a folder called env and a folder called my API. So my API is the Django project and env is the virtual environment I created to hold all of our dependencies. So to create a virtual environment on Mac is really easy. So on Mac, all you have to do is type on Python 3 minus M V E N V to say that you want to create a virtual environment and then you give it a name and I run that and it creates our virtual environment. And then if I want to go into the virtual environment, I just say source equals env slash bin slash activate. On Windows, the process is a bit different, so I will put a link in the video description to show you how to set up a virtual environment on Windows. So now we're in our environment, I want to download Django, and the way I do that is I just say pip install Django. And I already have Django installed, so it's not going to install it, but for you, that's going to install Django. So when you install Django, you get a new command on your computer, Django admin. And we want to say Django admin start project, and we'll give it a name, pi api. Run that. As you can see, Django has created a new folder for us. Manage.py is a program that Django runs. So every time I want to do some work with Django, I run Python manage.py and then whatever the command is that I want to run. So I could say run server. And if I was to go to localhost, you can see it says Django was installed. So your Django project will contain lots of apps. So to create an app, we want to say Django admin start app and we want to give our app a name. We'll call it my app. So here is my whole Django project. And the four files that we care about are these four up here. Settings, URLs, views, and models. So inside settings, you want to scroll down to installed apps, and you want to add the app you just created called my app. And then what we want to do is we want to create a model because a model is how we interact with our database. So you'll find the models in the my app folder. So you'll find your models here. If I drag that in, you can see it's the same file. And you want to create a model called car, which is just a Python class that inherits from Django's model class. So a car has a name and it has a top speed. A name is a char field, which in MySQL will be converted to a varchar with a maximum length of 100. And top speed is an integer field, which will just be converted to an int in MySQL. So now we've added our app and we have created a model. We want to convert that model into an SQL table. So the way we convert this class into a MySQL table is we run python manage.py make migrations. You can see it says no changes detected because I've already run it. You might also get this the first time you run it. So in that case, what you want to do is say make migrations and you want to tell it the app where the model came from. In this case, we're going to say my app. So after you've run that, you have to create the table. So you want to say python manage.py migrate. And when you run that, it's going to actually execute the script that creates your MySQL tables. So after we've created our model, we want to create some URLs. So in Django, you go to the URLs file and that file is located outside of your app. It's inside of the my API folder, which is part of your project. So you can see I have three URLs. I have an index one. I have a slash car URL and I have a URL that just takes any string and maps it to a variable called car underscore name. So next we want to go to the views file. This is the final file we're going to look at. This is the one that does all of the logic for our API. So here is our views.py file. Every time we go to a URL, it will run one of these functions. So for index, it runs the index function, which doesn't do anything. All it does is return this JSON. Anytime we want to retrieve details about a car, we type in its name, just like this. And that runs the get car method. And if we want to add a new car, we run the add car method. 
So you can see we have a request parameter. So that tells us details about the request that was sent, which can be really useful. So the first thing we do is we check that a get request was sent. So if the user sent a get request, it means they want to retrieve details about a car. And to get details about a car, we use Django's MySQL interface. So we're not using an SQL database, we're using an SQL like database, which is exactly the same. It just means that it's stored in a file as opposed to a database running on a MySQL server. So in Django, the way you retrieve an object from the database is you give it a variable, and what you do is you use the class name .objects.get, and then you give it the name that you want to use to query the database. So this is really similar to a select statement. You would say select all from car, where name equals car name. So the equivalent MySQL statement will be something like that. So we use a Python try and accept block because we try to get a car out of the database and if we can't find a car with that name, we run the accept part of the statement. So if the car is found, we, we return the car's name and the car's top speed. We, otherwise, we tell the user that no car was found with that name and we send a HTTP response. So that's all it is to retrieving a car from the database because we don't have to worry about connecting to our database. We don't have to worry about SQL injection or anything like that. All it is is one line to retrieve data from our database. To add a car is really similar. And when we send a post request, we send our data in the body of the request. So we created a variable called payload and we convert the JSON in it to a Python object. So a Python dictionary in this case. So that allows us to access car name and top speed by going to the payload and just entering in its name in the square brackets. And if we go to paw, you can see here is the JSON that we're sending and here is the text version of it. So then what we do is we create a new car. So all we do is we create a car object. We give it the car name and a top speed. And then in Django to insert into the database, all we have to do is type car.save to save our object to the database. And we use the try and accept one more time because if we can successfully save it, we tell the user it was successful. Otherwise, we tell the user we couldn't add their car to the database. And then finally, we return a HTTP response. And that's all there is to creating a really simple API in Django. As always, the source code to all of this will be on the HowCode GitHub page. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.